Okay, good morning, everyone. After those beautiful pictures, I'm going to PowerPoint you to death. We're using uh, my role is to present to you the technologies that we have to implement IP infrastructure for beyond high definition. It's a little bit technical. I'm going to try to make the presentation uh, more understandable. Uh, my name is Hugo Gagioni. I'm the CTO for the Sony Professional Solutions of America. And the title is uh, Networking IP in for High Definition as well as 4K Applications. Uh, as you know, uh, since the beginning of 1990s, we've been using SDI, Serial Digital Interfaces, and HD, uh, Serial Digital Interfaces. And this is the world of broadcasting, the world of live television. A single cable operating up to 1.53 gigabit per second. But the industry is moving very fast, and we are now transitioning to using uh, IP interconnections. And the ideal, uh, sometime in the very, very near future, is to use IP fabric, IP switching fabric, to interconnect uh, different devices. Um, it is not only point-to-point -point communication, but also uh, multicasting, multi-point to multi-point communication to interconnect probably central broadcast stations to regional stations and also uh, stadiums and arenas for sports applications. Then the benefits of IP interconnection, probably you are very familiar with, but let me review them again, is uh, Sony wants to use commercial off-the-shelf, uh, readily available IP infrastructure. It could be any manufacturer of uh, IP switches, Cisco, Juniper, the Hewlett Packard, Arista, any commodity data centers. Uh, the goal is to try to reduce the total cost of the infrastructure, okay, with uh, reducing the cost of cables, the reduce of uh, management overhead. Uh, the system should be very flexible. In order to someday, someday we we are, we are going to abandon HD. We will move to 4K. Therefore, without ex completely restructuring the system, we should be able to use an infrastructure that's very flexible. Um, the system will grow as far as your network is available. May, you may have uh, broadcast centers that the different production centers will be in different cities. If the network interoperates between the different cities, you will have a unified infrastructure. Uh, Sony has been working very aggressively in the world of uh, standardization. Um, please, uh, I do not allow taking pictures of this uh, photograph, no, of the presentation. Thank you much. Um, we are part of uh, an organization, the Joint Task Force on Network Media which is an organization established by SEMTI and the EU, European Broadcasting Union. Uh, we've been working for over eight years trying to establish uh, standards as much as possible to make different vendors interoperate. Then uh, we have developed an IP core, it's a single chip, that we plan to uh, Im 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 imp implement in our cameras, CCUs, servers, production switchers, and you're going to see a lot of this hardware already with IP infrastructure right in the back of our booth. Then it's not only point-to-point, -point, but multi-point to multi-point communication. Right. A, a typical problem that we are, that many broadcasters have today is, for example, you have a routing device in your broadcast center, and, but maybe you have regional companies in other cities. Today, we tie together different uh, routing systems using tie lines, meaning electrical to optical, optical to electrical conversion. Well, this problem could be easily solved using a complete network. Imagine if we have a layer two or layer three IP fabric. We can do one gigabit, we can do 10 gigabits, and the many regions, many broadcast operations can be all connected with a single network using IP communication. Uh, another problem, uh, you may know that uh, outside broadcasting trucks are very expensive. Sometimes they have 18 cameras, 16 cameras, and the, uh, these are multi-million dollar uh, uh, trucks. 
and usually those trucks are only employed in very in very large uh, sporting events it could be the world cup or uh, international tennis games it's very difficult to deploy these trucks in, a, in a small venues in a small college operation but if we could reuse the power of the ip i can deploy minimum amount of uh, equipment in the in the regions and leave all of the broadcasting signal processing back in the station Therefore, we will reduce significantly the cost of production by employing a minimum number of cameras and operators in the field and leaving all of the production back in the, in the broadcast center. Anyway, this, this is our goal. Our goal is to create an ecosystem uh, where the interfaces are going to be all IP-based. We are disclosing, we are communicating with many companies. Uh, I'm going to show you later. Uh, and we have a special partnership uh, with Eberts, and we are discussing how to interoperate both the control surfaces as well as uh, streams. And uh, uh, we are working, and we're going to show you a full network uh, redundancy, because in the world of IP, you can lose packets. All right. Uh, somebody asked me recently, well, uh, what is so new about IP? H have we not been using IP packets for a long time? Uh, we send text messages. We send PowerPoints. Yes, these are best effort communication. You send a, a, an email, and it gets there when it gets there. It's not a real-time operation. In broadcasting, we need minimum latency. We need to have real-time operations and synchronous processing. We have to gen lock all of our devices. It's not like multiple computers that are totally disconnected. Everything has to be gen locked. And uh, switching, switching of video streams, camera A to camera B. When you switch an IP packet, you may find that you are disrupting the video. Well, fortunately, the technologies have improved. We now have better knowledge. And uh, recently, uh, well, about eight years ago, there was a standard called the IEEE 1588, uh, also known as PTP, Precision Time Protocol. This is the key technology that uh, enables now uh, manufacturers to implement uh, real-time IP synchronization. Uh, let me just say a few words. Please do not take pictures. I appreciate it. Um, there is a standard that just came out. It's called SEMTI 2059. It was today SEMTI announced to the world. We have, uh, we, we have spent seven years trying to get an agreement on this standard, and finally we have it. 2059 it has two parts. One is the transmission of PTP messages, time messages. And the other one is audio-video signal synchronization. Then in uh, one of the, the second part of this standard defines the beginning of time. It's called the Semti Epoch, as the midnight of 1970. At that moment, if you were to synchronize an audio-video signal, and you know exactly the face of that signal against the time, you can reproduce any moment in the into the future. You can reconstruct the timing of the video signal. Uh, we can also gen lock to GPS or to Grand Masters, PTP Grand Masters. Let me show you in a picture. Rather than having a clock generator in the broadcast plant, we're going to have now a PTP Grand Master. The Grand Master distributes time messages. Time messages are gen locking all of the devices in the plant. Then the data of audio, video data becomes packetized. It's just data. Once the data gets to the uh, slave, from the transmitter to the receiver, we reconstruct the timing of that data in the receiving end, totally synchronous, using time messages. Th that's the most important evolution in, in, in technology right now, the distribution of time messages. All right, uh, what is the key element of a broadcast plant? It's the SDI router. In SDI, we have three different planes. We have media planes, meaning 
a coaxial cable from the camera to the router. We have timing planes. The timing information from the signal, sig 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 signal generator is distributed to all of the elements of the broadcasting plan. And we have controllers to do the switching of the IP router. If we somehow could reproduce, reproduce these functions, but with IP, we may have a good shot at creating an IP-based plant. Let's see if we can do that. I'm going to replace my SDI router with an IP router. Select your favorite manufacturer. But to connect to the IP switch, I need to have audio video to IP converters. And I need to have an interface. These are the embedded in the equipment or external to the Please do not take pictures. Thank you much. All right, uh, timing is going to be my PTP grandmaster. That's going to send timing information over the switch. And control, I can use the same control surfaces. I can use somebody else's control surfaces. I can partner with a third party company. Then if we could achieve this, we have a shot at creating an IP switching environment inside broadcasting, OK? But there are a lot of requirements. And let me walk you uh, slowly through this. The audio video to IP, we need a converter. This is going to be an LSI, a large scale integrated circuit. We need to s create a standard for network synchronization. We're going to use safety standards as much as possible. We need to have an intelligence. This is a live system manager because IP switches don't understand video, don't understand audio. Then we have to create an intelligence that will manipulate the ports of the IP switch to route the uh, IP addresses from input to output. That's a s an in system manager. And we need to create knowledge to do clean video switching. I have to be able to switch camera A to camera B transparently. All right. Um, one very important requirement, if Sony uh, introduces IP and we take anything away from your operations, we are dead. It will not work. If you, and we have to maintain the same operational practices that you have today in SDI. Um, we will try to use standards as much as possible. And uh, we need sub-microsecond latency to switch IP packets. Uh, very important, I need to define technologies to do frame accurate switching on the vertical blanking, to do from uh, source A to source B to source D. Also, different packets for different essences. There are going to be datagrams or packets for video, packets for audio, packets for metadata. It's very, very important. We do not support a single a stream of HDSEI packetize. That you will see in a minute, this, this is very problematic. All right, um, then these are the standards, these are the requirements, these are the technologies. Um, you can see uh, all of this implemented in the back of the booth. We have an, a, a 4K truck, and in front of that 4K truck, you're gonna see a production switcher that uses the technology that I'm going to explain in a minute. Okay, uh, based around SMT 2059, using a low latency video coding, extremely low latency, to do sub microsecond uh, switching of video. Okay, also a uh, redundancy. Uh, IP switches fail, and we need to monitor in instant moment how to switch from the main network to a backup network without any distortions of the video. All right. Uh, you may say, well, why are we doing this? Why, why, why are we moving to IP? Well, in the world of HD, it's a single cable. That, that, that's OK. But in the world of 4K, today, I'm, I need to use four cables. A 4K signal, 4K 60p, is 12 gigabits per second. I need four coaxial cables, each one of three gigabits. And that's very painful. It creates a lot of cable in the trucks and the op operation. 
also um, having to use four cables reduces the size of our production switchers and routing therefore our goal is to try to use as much as possible IP technology from the information technology industry either a CAT6 cabling or fiber optic cabling in order to carry 4K streams. All right, this is the connector. It's a connector that we use from the data centers. Um, it's called SFP Plus. This connector can be used in 40 gigabit connections or 10 gigabit connections or one gigabit connection. Uh, with single mode fiber, we can reach over 10 kilometers with a multi-mode fiber is about 300 meters of distance and for wiring of a truck we have a, a cable called a twinax very popular very easy to very inexpensive to wire a short distances so up to about 30 feet or 10 meters all right this is an example uh, we built this truck uh, two years ago for uh, the confederation cup and the world cup uh, this truck had eight cameras of 4K, okay, and uh, it had a lot of BNC cables inside, uh, 362 pieces, and it's a lot of weight. If we were to replace this with IP, we will have a reduction of 85% of wiring and weight in the truck. Then this is why we need to move to IP infrastructure. This is the chip. This is a very complex LSI, large scale integration that Sony developed to, uh, that has audio video synchronization, it has compression, it has network synchronization, it has two ports of 10 gigabits, four ports of one gigabit, four ports of HDSEIs, and um, it covers all of the layers of the internet uh, structure. And we can s use this either as a single chip or a, an FPGA. Sony is licensing this technology to other companies. A, or daughter cards that can be incorporated in other, other companies' products. All right. Um, when we move into the world of IP streams, we have to create some new definitions. Uh, now you don't say simply camera A or camera B. Now we say packets, and these IP packets belong to a source or a destination. Therefore, we need to create management of those audio-video streams. We need to control how many of these devices are connected to the network, because we may oversubscribe the switching fabric to many packets coming into a port. And we need to manage those devices to do clean switching. Uh, my analogy is that this is a big highway where there are many cars driving into the highway. But uh, because we have audio video transmission, we need to define very specific lanes in the highway. This is bandwidth reservation. Therefore, we will give maximum priority to control signals. We will give maximum priority to the audio video streams and all the other data emails, PowerPoints, they will reach their, at their own pace. It's called best effort technology. All right, um, by this notion of an audio video uh, node or packets that belong to a single device, we can go and send those streams through a switching fabric and have the same performance that we have today in an audio video router. Then I can switch cameras to destinations in the same way that we do today with an SDI router, all right? All right, uh, let me go a little bit deeper, but uh, it's important because this uh, allows you to understand uh, what is behind all this technology. IP switches change destinations and sources, uh, IP addresses using a technology called IGMP, Internet Group management protocol. Then that message, that IGMP message, uh, makes the switch fabric go from port A to port C. Okay. The problem with that IGMP technology is that IP switches don't know about 
audio video frames. They just switch. They don't know whether you're switching in the vertical blanking or you're switching in the middle of the frame. You can completely destroy your video by switching in the wrong place. Therefore, a, a, a frame of video, for example, a frame of video may have over 4,000 packets. And when you tell the switch, join this stream or leave this stream, this is where problems can happen. And then Sony invented a technology. Uh, there are three places where you can execute switching. In the source, in the switch, or in the destination. Sony decided to use destination-based or receiver-based switching. And I'm going to walk you through this. There are four steps to do switching. And this is what the chip can do. First, a frame information insertion. Because these are packets, thousands of packets. Each one of those packets needs to know the frame that packet belongs to. Uh, I will execute a rough video switching. And it will have some imperfections. We have to correct that. And then eventually, produce clean video and synchronized video. Let me show you a step by step. All right, there you see two cameras. The two cameras, camera A or sender A, sender B. And I have my audio video signals. These are frames, frame A, frame B. This is the synchronous zone. It's approaching, and now I'm gonna convert them through the chip into IP packets. then each one of these IP packets will have in their header a notion of the frame that that packet belonged to. Frame one, frame two, thousands of packets going through your streams. All right, this is now traveling through your IP fabric. Then at the receiving end, it could be an operator in the switch, in the production switch, you will say, uh, leave this camera and join the other camera. I'm going to switch between two sources. I'm going to leave or join a new stream, and I'm going to leave the other stream. And you send that message to the IP fabric, to the IP switch. The, but the IP switch cannot respond very fast, and the IP switch doesn't know whether it's vertical blanking to switch. OK? Then the switching point is established by the receiver. I'm going to switch in a vertical blanking. Then, as you leave and join the streams, they're going to be unnecessary packets. And the receiving chip will discard the unnecessary packets and create a very clean switch between the two streams during the vertical blanking. And then, the chip will resynchronize and output audio video synchronize. Okay? Then, these are the functions of the receiver device. Uh, there you see one chip on the top, on the, let's say, the transmitter camera, and I have another chip in my receiving switch. And I'm constantly sending two streams of packets. All right? Then IP switches, some are very fancy, some are very expensive, and they are very fast. Other IP switches are slower, commodity, they will have more latency. Therefore, we have to buffer any delays of the packet through the IP fabric. Then by creating one frame delay, I can buffer and uh, reorganize, resynchronize all of my videos within one frame of delay. I can support SDI, HDSDI, 4K, all the way up to 8K uh, transmission of IP. Uh, just to summarize this, I have my two cameras. I will convert the audio video into packets. My receiver will issue the message of switching through my system manager. And the system manager is you punching a button in your controller. And uh, uh, the IGMP messages go into the IP fabric. And we will have this overlapping of the packets, we will discard the uh, un unnecessary packet, and we have our clean video. Okay? Therefore, uh, this is what you're going to see at the back of the booth in our production switcher.
and we have different demos for you to see how fast the switching takes place. Uh, another very important uh, uh, subject, uh, sometimes there are too many packets going into a port of an IP switch. This is called oversubscription, and the port will collapse, and you start losing packets. In banking, in IT, what's happened is as soon as the system manager sees that the packets are not going through, you switch to another uh, backup network. But that's bad news because the, the video is already broken. It's, it's already damaged. That, that doesn't work for television. Then what we do is we have two streams all the time out of the transmitter chip. And if one of the packets on in the main network fails, we do a hitless failover. And instantly we replace the packet that is being obstructed by the by the fab by the switching fabric. And you never notice the, the distortion in the in the video. <laughs> you will get a log uh, that something happened in the main network, but that's all. All right. Uh, IP is a very controversial topic, very, very technically uh, complex, and there are a lot of uh, standards. And there is a standardization activities. Uh, there is a joint task force for network media standardization. Uh, mm, uh, over 160 companies are participating. And uh, it's not necessarily creation of new standards, but framework of interoperation. And the uh, standard that has been used f uh, f in initially for um, for transmission of IP has been 702022. This was a point to point transmission of audio video over communication networks. 702022. But that uh, standard is not suitable, ready, not not ready yet for production for switching, and we have to. Uh, modified uh, slightly that standard in order, in order to make it work in, in, in live television. Then uh, this standard has a number of layers, layer one, two, three, four, layer five deals with forward error correction, layer six deals with mapping, how we convert an audio video into IP, and layer seven is hitless failover, how to switch from a broken fiber to another. Then uh, Sony has uh, recommended, we have introduced proposals to SEMTI to uh, make it work, and I'm going to show you in a minute how we do this, is in layer five and layer six. These are very, very important technical changes. Um, layer six is called 2022-6. Establishes that you convert full HDSDI over IP. And all the vendors, all the companies have adopted 2022-6. But there is a problem. The problem is that if you want to do audio manipulation or audio insertion, you have to take your IP stream, go back to the multiplexing baseband, replace the audio channel, and reconvert back to IP. And that is a very cumbersome process. Then Sony is proposing to have three different streams three different datagrams. A datagram for video, a datagram for audio, this one, yeah. A datagram for audio and a datagram for metadata. Three different data streams. So that if you need to do audio manipulation, you don't have to bother the video, only go to the audio datagrams. The other problem is uh, the forward error correction. The original forward error correction was designed for contribution, meaning you have a, a source, you have a destination, and you send the signal. There's no switching. That means the forward error correction algorithm could overlap blocks or packets crossing frames of video. I could have a, a video boundary frame that is encapsulated by the forward error correction algorithm. If by bad luck you were to switch at that point, you will destroy the forward error correction, and you cannot recover the packet. That's bad news. Then what we are proposing, and this is what we implemented in our chip, is to have frame-aware boundary forward error correction. Then the algorithm would closes itself 
as it approaches the end of a frame. Then it's frame boundary aware algorithm. Then you can switch in the vertical blanking or corresponding to that IP packet and there will be no distortion. All right, uh, this is our ecosystem. This is our uh, overall production system. And uh, these devices uh, are now being implemented in CCUs, cameras, monitors, uh, production switches. Uh, we are licensing, we are talking to many, many companies that uh, some of them are buying the chips, some others are doing uh, FPGAs, uh, somebody, some others are using SDKs. Uh, and we have a good collaboration with Ebert. We have a, a demonstration of uh, Ebert and Sony equipment in the back of the booth. Also, we have a demo at Ebert's booth of interoperability, both from a control surface as well as passing streams. In the, uh, from a components that we are now releasing to, to the industry, we have a system manager. This is the intelligence that controls the entire IP infrastructure. And we have a rack or processing unit that serves us to put uh, audio video cards converted to IP and vice versa, it's a bidirectional card. Then uh, these are the functions of the uh, live system manager. Uh, it comes all pre-configured pre in a very, uh, very small server and um, it knows who is connected to the network. It has full knowledge of all of the devices and identification and uh, priorities of the devices, who can connect to who. There's always also uh, restrictions of connectivity that's all controlled by the system manager. Um, it has all of the cross point switching functionality. I can do naming, level, status, tally. Uh, I can substitute audio. All of these are the functions of the system manager. And also, this is the layer of intelligence that executes the switching in the IP fabric. And also talks to third party companies. They may, let's say you have a Magnum control surface from Ebert. Magnum can control Sony equipment by exchanging API messages with our system manager. These are the cards that you're going to see in the back of the booth. Uh, notice that uh, these cards have four BNC connectors and two data ports. The two data ports, one is the main and the other one is the backup. O if you don't want to use the backup, it's okay. <laughs> but uh, we recommend that you use a backup. These are all bidirectional. Then this card can do four HDs on one gigabit or two 1080 60Ps on one gigabit or you can do one 4K on 10 gigabits. And these cards can come either optical connection or cop uh, copper connection, RJ45s or SFP connector. The other card, it, it can do 16 channels of audio, multiplex over 10 gigabit. We are also developing another card that will be audio over IP using the standard uh, AS67, if you are familiar with that. Um, these are the companies that are now in discussion with Sony. Uh, we, have a, we, are we are announcing now 30 companies. At IBC last year, we had 10 companies. Now we have 30 companies that uh, are uh, collaborating with us, and we are exchanging a lot of technology with them. All right, this is my last slide, my conclusions. Uh, we are now finally able to use generic Ethernet switches. We don't have to use proprietary uh, switching fabrics to do this. This can be with any type of switches. We are following as much as possible a existing standard, and we are helping to modify some of the existing standards to make it work for production. And, uh, and we hope to ride the evolution of IT technologies, okay, in order to, to get the benefit of the economies of scale of the IT industry. Uh, thank you very much. I'll be here. If you have any questions, uh, appreciate it. Thank you.